to all beautiful souls who are tuning in today and welcome to 30 Minutes Exploring Coaching. Today, I'm so excited to have someone very special to me whom used to tell me, Remy, I believe in what you're doing. Keep on doing that. Yeah. I can still feel her words in me until today. A qualified remedial uh, therapist a personal trainer, NLP practitioner specializing in the arena of sports and a co-partner of a very successful coaching practice in Australia named Coach Tok, T-O-R-Q-U-E. An avid fan of motorsports herself, she races car during her leisure time, but <laughs> her love for horses brings her from like four views to four legs nowadays so she raised horses nowadays well i could hold my breath talking about her accomplishments her passions but i would prefer to pass it to her herself to tell us more about who you are i pass it to you lj Hi, Remy. Thank you so much for having me here today. Hi, everybody. I'm LJ Braithwaite. I'm one of the co-founders of Coach Talk. We are a high-performance uh, business and personal leadership coaching team. We work in both the corporate space and the personal space. And we also have a podcast called Coach Talk, which you can listen to on all the major platforms, Spotify, um, YouTube, etc. So we've been doing podcasting since August last year. I think we're very close to our 50th episode. So we're very excited about that. <laughs> um, what else can I tell you? I am a people person as I have got to meet this beautiful soul through my journey in the coaching world, in the coaching space. Um, I love being able to support and cheerlead people on their journey to their dreams. It's, it's really, really important. And it doesn't matter what your dream is. You have the capacity to achieve it if you believe it enough. However, in saying that, Belief is one thing, but we need action. And just like when we learnt to ride a bike or we learnt to read a book, we're not born knowing how to do these things. So most of us have played sports, we've had help along the way, and it doesn't matter whether it was your parents, your grandparents, your teacher, your um, basketball coach, Anybody who's teaching you through example is technically coaching and mentoring you to help you facilitate the skills you need to take you to the next level of your journey. And essentially that's coaching. That's what we do. We help you facilitate through your own learning and your own skill development what you need to take the steps and the actions towards the dreams that you have. Beautifully said, don't you? From car racing to horses and then to life <laughs> coaching. Now, which part of this life uh, coaching that touches you on in terms of a personal level that makes you say yes, you know, yes to life coaching? Can you please share that? Uh, I'm a massive believer that we all have the capacity to perform at a high level. So high performance coaching is what um, I help with. Uh, that's not to say that it's at a high level sports. I mean, I've certainly done that and I'm certainly very proficient in that arena as is my business partner. High performance is about everyday people being able to be the best versions of themselves and to continue to grow and learn to be better than they were the day before. We all have that capacity to do it. And seeing people's growth and development really lights me up because think of it like um, think of it like a gardener. I get to I get to tend to the garden and I get to um, water it and nurture it and talk you know really lovingly to it. And that care and that compassion and that empathy eventually grows beautiful flowers and and you get so much enjoyment from seeing the nourishment and the flourishing of, of the things around you and the people around you. I'm, I'm such a people soul. 
it's good that uh, you are you you coach a lot of uh, high performer, especially in uh, the arena of sports, and then you talk about well, to to cultivate this kind of garden. Why, how do you going to nurture the garden in order for the garden to grow beautiful roses? That means this type of perf- high performers, what they need to do and all that, you help them, you coach them. But I'm more interested on the soil of the garden you know, before things are being planted. So in coaching, I come across people tell me, hey Remy, that's your inner child at work. But in the beginning, I don't really understand. Hey, I'm a grown-up man now. You know why are you still talking about the inner child thing? And on a deeper level, they say, "Remy, this is your wounded inner child at work. So, no matter how old a person is, whether you're an athlete, sportsman, high performer, why do they still keep on telling me about this inner child thing now?" My question to you, as an a very experienced uh, coach LJ here is that how in what way this inner child affects a person even through their adulthood no matter how old a person is what say you in this what a great question Remy um, I guess I think of it a little bit differently than most other coaches for me looking back at where they where it is labeled like people like to label things where I don't necessarily label them but let's talk about the inner child and the wounded child for example so an inner child when we're children we love to play we love to explore we love adventure we love seeking the the unknown we're very you know, we're very, very curious and curiosity is the spice of life. We should actually embrace questions. We should embrace learning and asking, um, you know, children are great at asking how come, what for, what does it do, how does it... And as adults, we suppress curiosity in, in children as they get older where in actual fact we need to help them embrace curiosity. And as an adult when we're talking about an inner child from a coaching perspective we are trying to encourage that curiosity to come back so that it helps you find a way to ask better questions which then develops better uh, research and better finding of the information so that you can make a more informed choice about the direction that you want to go and why so well very interesting because uh, I, in the beginning, I also thought that, well, I am way past that inner child kind of thing. But the more I talk to a coach, the more I realize that a lot of my inner child is repeating himself, especially the pattern. Now, you bring up a very interesting thing called this curiosity. You know, the, as I grow older, slowly I lost it. How can a coach help a person you know, find his uh, in terms of that kind of curiosity as a child has like what you mentioned just now in what way a coach can help me oh great question so essentially essentially curiosity is the key to your learning stepping stones because when we're curious we ask questions And when we learn to ask better questions and more precise questions to help draw out the information that we're looking for or the information that we're trying to make an informed choice on, it means that we're then diving deeper and we're creating not only a curious approach, we're creating learning on it on a different scale because we're instead of sitting on the water up here we're actually diving underneath so that our understanding and our perspective can actually have a bit of a shift as well okay. now you have coached many high performer before but uh, in the beginning of your coaching uh, journey have you come across like uh, i'm sure people will ask you you want to coach me I'm a high performer in my sport but you're not uh, an expert in my areas of sport maybe you're good in racing in horses but I'm in other areas of sports uh, arena how how can by engaging you helping me in terms of 
to up my levels of performance or my game in my competitions? Yeah, great question. So it doesn't matter what sport you are proficient in or that you choose to follow or your passions, the mindset is everything. So your willingness to focus, your willingness to develop skills, to ask questions through curiosity, to model people who have actually achieved to the level that you want to achieve. And it doesn't have to be high performance sports either. It can be just mum and dad or teenagers it, it, it doesn't matter whether you're high performance in the top of your industry or whether you're considered a normal person we all have the capacity to show up in our best selves to do that to be our best selves we need to actually start looking at our values our morals and our beliefs and then the actions that support the values so beliefs will change values seldom do change so for my example i review my values every six months and what i normally find is my top three values are always the same and they have been consistently since i was a teenager but the last two values that show up every six months they are normally indicative of what i'm studying or what i'm working towards so i have three very solid solid values and two that are um are, that are new values that are more considered to the journey that i'm on at that point in time so my values stay the same however as i learn, learn and grow and develop skills my beliefs will change and my perception will change my ability to accept um feedback and to change pers uh, perspective broadens and that's a good thing so think of it like if a tree only grew up straight and had three leaves on the top of it with no branches, it wouldn't be a very strong tree. Yes. It wouldn't provide shade. It wouldn't provide nourishment for the ground below. It wouldn't provide homes for birds. It would actually be incomplete, whereas a tree needs to have lots of little offshoots, just like we do. Our lives are meant to have lots of little offshoots of learning and growth so that we can actually become stronger and better. Part of that journey is actually to make sure that what we listen to, what we read, the habits we have, making sure that the actions and the accountability and most importantly, that we turn up authentically every single day. Authenticity is the thing that really determines a person's success. Authenticity, I love that. Again, when you mentioned just now you have your top three values and then you know, the two you review maybe three months, six months, that's a very good thing to do for a person to grow. And like to me, I call it like realign to my values. But I'm so surprised I spoke to many people. I say, okay, let's before we start, let's you know, can you please share with me what are your core values? You know, things. I was surprised. People ask me, Remy, what do you mean by yeah. my core values? Or my, you're asking me my values? Is it that you're asking me how much I'm worth? Is it? I said, no, <laughs> I'm not asking about you know, the money that you have in a bank or your properties. No, I'm not talking about that. So to a layman, LJ, how can you, you know, explain this? What is the core values and why is it so important to a person? Great. Uh, core values are, core values are the, if I use like a, 10 pin bowling do you know 10 pin bowling yes. so when we teach children 10 pin bowling we put the the bumper lanes into the gutters so that the ball can bounce oh. so if you think if you think of values are your guidelines just like a bumper bowling they're the th um you'll have a value um that has tolerances between point a and point b and anything that happens between those tolerant points of that value you are happy and you accept and you will learn and grow with however when it steps outside the parameters of that value to what is not tolerated for you 
you've hit a threshold that says that's not okay with me so it's values are the core guidelines that help you know right from wrong whether you're being authentic and congruent in your behaviors and your actions um, it can be physical it can be mental it can be spiritual those those values usually align between the three so does does that help yes you know, in the beginning i was lost too i don't really know what are my values until i really sit down like what you mentioned is now or it can be in terms of from a religion point of view from a parent point of view you know different different categories of life i can may have different sets of values so unless the person know what is his or her own values then if not then she will be that person will be drifting left and right left and right you know like you say during the pinball there's no uh, things to guide to to fall back on or oh, back to my values back to my values awesome yeah so usually i would say majority of uh, people don't really sit down and really write down about their values now when a person don't have values circumstances happen things happen challenges happen in life one of the most famous phrase i i ever heard is that i don't know really i don't know why it happens i don't know why things always happen to me maybe i'm in the bad luck or what i just don't know do you think that i don't want to do something about it when someone says that to me, I smell a little bit of victimhood. You know, maybe a few dashes of like blaming somewhere. It's not me. It's not me. It's the circumstances. You know. Now, what uh, has victimhood and ownership? You know, got to do with what I just shared just now from a coaching perspective. Uh authenticity and congruency yeah. have everything to do with uh, accountability everything to do with accountability so we teach our children to know right from wrong but what we don't give them the confidence to do is to say it's okay to make mistakes because that's how we learn but when we make them we need to actually say I got it wrong that was my you know I tried it this way and it wasn't the way it, it didn't go right so we don't actually venture in and I'm not sure why but we never actually venture into teaching kids how to have true authentic accountability and understand that every consequence every action has a consequence now it's either going to be a i don't think in terms of good and bad and, and my clients that work with me we never think of things in, as being a good experience or a bad experience i tend to talk more it was either a lesson or a blessings mm. so it was a learning opportunity or it was a and a, a learning and growth opportunities because every consequence has the ability to teach us something there's always a silver lining to every decision whether it worked out the way you thought it might have or not. So we need to, as humans, actually, and, and human, we're human beings having a human, ex, a human experience. Life is actually about learning and navigation and connection. Le really importantly, especially this day and age, as you know, we, we can talk about the whole technology um, uh, till the cows come home. But we as humans, we're meant to connect. We're meant to actually, I see you, Remy. I see the work you're doing. We're meant to have great conversations and we're meant to have show kindness and humility and compassion and empathy and to actually go, I'm really sorry, but I got that wrong. Um, but I'll do better next time because that's my learning from it. Interesting. When we can teach that from a, a, a first of all presenting ourselves that way and authentically showing up that way not trying to be perfect because there's no such things when we become better role models and when we become better self-leaders 
then the people around us lift. I think I think one of the things that from a coaching perspective is we have to walk the talk and we need to actually be who we we choose or we're telling people we are like i am kind i am authentic i am congruent in my actions i have a massive amount of accountability and sometimes too much accountability i learn i grow every day but i'm human too yes. i fall forwards i get it wrong and i go oh you know, I can throw my hands up and go, today is not a good day. And you know what? That's okay because tomorrow is going to be a better day. I always have great days, but some days are just greater than others. I love that. <laughs> I always have great days. Some days are better than others. I love that. You mentioned this uh, very important uh, word, accountability. Right? I which brings me back I did remember I, I once was sharing this accountability to someone I said well okay things happen but in what way can you hold accountability for what has happened then this person suddenly like uh, you know what do you mean Remy accountability are you saying that I should take all the blame on what is happening around me it's not even my fault how can a person draw a sand line between taking accountability and self-blame, LJ? Oh, great question. Great question. I, I always like to ask people um, this one really important question when we talk about this. So I'm going to ask it to you, Remy. Is that okay? Sure. So what is your understanding of the difference between responsibility and accountability? Wow. <laughs> To me, accountability sort of like, a, okay, no doubt that I may not play a part in everything that is happening around me, but if it's concerned my life, in what way can I like do something about it? What can I make out of it? What can I get out of it? You know, how can I hold myself accountable? In what uh, part do I play in it? Okay, things screwed up. I screw this up or, or circumstances in my business you know uh, didn't turn up the way I was expecting it in what way can I hold myself accountable not blaming until I have to bash myself saying that you know I'm not good you know I screwed up I'm whatever but in what way do I play my part deep is it because that I forgot to ask something is it because that we didn't, I didn't really create that kind of agreement that I need to have between me and the customers. Those kind of accountability I'm talking about to me from my understanding. I, I love that that's your understanding and thank you for sharing with me. I really appreciate it. For, for this act of simplicity um, for the people that are watching this and for how I have a conversation around accountability and responsibility with the people that I coach. Simplic simply put, accountability is something that you own. The decisions, regardless of the outcome, mm. that's wholly and solely yours to own. Now, in my definition, responsibility is something that is given. So if I task you with something i'm handing over accountability to you and i'm giving you responsibility to actually say that you will accept the outcome regardless of what it is does that make sense so one is your ownership and one is i give you ownership responsibility that means something yeah, so, has been given to me to uphold it because when we talk about kids again, when you when you ask them to let's say a chore, when you ask them to do the dishes, you're you're handing over accountability to them for the dishes to be done, but you're giving them the responsibility to underdo the task. Yes. yes. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> Because, uh, yeah, so in, in short, responsibility is given, 
accountability is owned. That's how I like to define it for the, the clients that I work with. So from what I'm hearing, it's more like accountability is more like taking ownership. Yeah, 100%. Beautiful, you see. So well, at least when I take ownership of what is happening in my life, somehow it makes me feel that, well, I take ownership, I'm the problem. If I'm the problem, at least I can create the solutions for my problems somehow. Yes. Do you know, everybody has challenges. Challenges are just things that come up we don't have solutions to yet. Yes. So hearing the word taking accountability, I mean taking ownership, at least somehow I feel that, well, the power is still within me because I'm the one who absolutely <laughs> taking ownership of what is happening, whether it's good. Absolutely, or absolutely. Now I understand. <laughs> 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 Which brings me to another areas of a very interesting. This is like a chicken and egg kind of thing. A lot of uh, uh, people come into coaching in the areas of relationship. Okay. Yep. Right. It's. It's a, wow, it's a very broad uh, areas of coaching. But many relationships fail or turn sour, you know. When I'm talking about relationship, I'm, I, what I mean is that not necessarily just between partners or spouses. It can be between teammates, colleagues, you know, relative, any kind of relationship that I'm talking about. But most relationships that turn sour and through my understanding and my hearing of a lot of cases, it boils down to this like because either one party cannot keep up with the expectations of the other person or the re expectation of the relationship. Now, what say you on this word here that I just mentioned? Expectation. Oh, you'd like to... <laughs> In what <laughs> you way, like to go down this? <laughs> it destroy, you know, it destroy relationship. Divorce happen and all that. Then they start to, well, people uh, complain about this. Oh, my partner this and partner that, and because of you know, I expect him or her to do 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 do, do all the blah blah blah. I hear a lot of the this word keep on repeating. Expectation, expectation, expectation. What say you, LJ? In this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. we have, we've actually had a few conversations around this Remy over the time that we've known each other which has been beautiful conversations <laughs> so and there's there's lots out there about relationships and and it's a whole um, it's a whole big area of course because there's so many complexities into you know friendships relationships um, whether they be professional or personal I, I think it gets back to accountability for me um, in terms of if we are if we are giving the responsibility to somebody else to fulfill our needs where we're not prepared to fulfill our own needs we're being very very unfair and we're actually setting that person up to fail so why why are we so determined to make somebody else be something that we won't do for ourselves that's really inauthentic for us to have great relationships we actually need to work on the longest relationship we are ever going to have and that's with the person in the mirror our relationship with ourselves is the most fundamental relationship that we have and if we don't like who we are and how we show up and where we're going in the world then that is a foundational issue or challenge that can be worked on through accountability and it must be worked on if you want to have better relationships personally and professionally because once we show up without expectation that another person has to fulfill our needs we then show up as a more complete person and a more open without expectation and without setting a benchmark other than our values that then means that the people that we're having 
professional and personal relationships actually have half a chance of meeting because if our values match we're going to have great relationships when our values don't match it's not going to be an easy fit and that's okay not everybody has to like us and not everybody has to to love us and not everybody is meant to be on the journey with us however we are meant to be on the journey with ourselves and we are meant to be able to look in the mirror and say i like the person that you are and i like how you show up and i'm happy in my own skin because until we can do that we are being exceptionally unfair to the people that we love and care about expecting them to fulfill a need that we're not willing to do for ourselves I'm not sure that quite answers your question, but that's... Yes, yes, I hear you. And that's why I call it the silence, uh, the killer in a relationship. Expectations. You know. Expectations, expectations is essentially outsourcing your, your accountability. You're handing, and when it gets back to that accountability, responsibility, you're actually giving somebody else the responsibility to do what you're not willing to do for yourselves and when they cannot do it because they physically and mentally and emotionally cannot do their work that you're meant to be doing we then think we've got a right to actually go off at them for that when in actual fact we need to be going off at ourselves for being not prepared to do the work I, I learned through experience that when I have expectation, two things will happen. One is that if I expect you, LJ, to do something for me and you do it, nothing happened because this is what I expect you to do for me. But if I expect you to do something for me and you don't, I'm going to feel very disappointed. Absolutely. But then when we put it into a, a slightly different connection, when we, we're talking about the, let's go back to high performance for a moment because high performance athletes and, and people at the top of their game, regardless of whether it's personal, professional, sporting, mm. because they have developed such an inward authenticity and strong mindset around how to plan to go from point A to point B and they know the path, because their accountability is, I have to do the work to get me from where I am now to where I want to be. They are able to achieve through the expectation of outcome because they actually do the work and all the steps. Does that make sense? Yes. Which is why I think there's like 25 billion people in the world, but there's only a handful of people that ever make it to that echelon of the top of the sporting because it's a mindset and it's about accountability in the work that has to be done internally to be able to go from point A to point B. And until we as normal people actually show up with that mindset of going, I will do the work to get me from where I am now to where I choose to be. And I will have better conversations around this journey with the people in my space so that they know how I need the support and how, um, and then my, they have clear expectations of what I need from them and how we can both mutually help each other. So the communication is better. When there's not much communication, expectation is always going to be let down. Communicate, good communication is still the key. Oh, absolutely. Without communications, nothing gets done. <laughs> wow. you, you get a mismatch, you kind of pass each other in the night. How, what's your desire, things, and all that, you know? Like, there's no communication, everything will be cut off. There's no connections at all. Beautifully said. Now, being, I could go on having this coaching, beautiful, meaningful coaching conversations with you, LJ, but being <laughs> mindful of time, now, I would like to ask you what will be your key message to our beautiful audience here today? if let's say someone new to the world of coaching what would be your message be to them first of all every coach is different 
And I love that you're venturing into this space because it's really exciting that you have decided to invest in yourself. I'm so excited for you because investing in yourself is one of the most important things you can do for you to make your world change for the better. When it comes to actually choosing a coach, well, that again comes back to good communication where people can bring out the curiosity in you and that they understand what you're looking for from coaching. So if you're somebody who wants to learn how to play basketball, for example, you're not going to necessarily go to a swimming coach. You're going to find somebody who's proficient in the skills and the area of, of skill set that you're looking to learn and grow into. Now, every one of us has very unique skills from a human perspective, we are all born different. However, it doesn't mean to say that if you only have a swimming coach available to you, they will still be able to serve and support you because at the end of the day, our role is to help you find your way through our curiosity to ask you great questions that then allows you to explore your world on a deeper level and with a broader perspective that you haven't thought of yet. And it is a journey. If you're after a quick fix, coaching is not for you. There's no such thing as a quick fix. If you're looking for real change and real support and real development to, to make your world how you see it and how you dream it, then coaching is very much for you. And it's an, an amazing journey that you never know where it's gonna lead you. And I love, I love that you're here and that you're asking all these questions because like I am a coach, I was born a coach, I'm, I'm, I'm a people person um, to cheerlead others, to see the potential and to, for you to reach your greatest potential on an everyday level. That's all we as coaches can ever want for you. Wow, beautifully said LJ our beautiful audience out there today if you have want to have more real conversation with real human you know any one of us would love to listen to your stories and to see in what way we can help you you know to work out what is it that you want to work out in your life so feel free to connect with LJ her contact can be you know, across our screen here you can see that straight away contact her or any one of us no problem we would love to listen and hear from you real conversations thank you so much for watching until then see you all next time bye 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 bye